really hard for me to open up in general about my feelings. You know, I hate being only seen for your faults. Yes, Amazon, get the f out. Firecross, uh, get the f out. Body wise, look at you. You're a bigger a mean person. I think I'm known for being mean, <laughs> but I have no shame anymore. This is just who I am. 39 years old and I'm still on reality. Reject of a life. You have fake boobs. You have fake boobs. You're anorexic. You can't get a husband. You don't have kids. You're ugly. Cry your heart out, you bitch. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, boy are you about to be dragged into a reality television deep hole full of controversies, cancellations, and just a lot of drama. Controversy and drama are two things that the star of today's video, Laurel Stuckey, is no stranger to. Laurel is a challenge beast. Standing at an impressive height of 5'11", she's a lean and often mean fighting machine that never fails to demonstrate amazing athletic abilities with each appearance on the challenge and she has a lot of appearances. Stucky is truly one of the OGs of reality television. She was back on the challenge when it was called the Road Rules Rear Wall Challenge and back when phones looked like this. So yeah, basically the Stone Age. Her career on the hit MTV series included 8 seasons, 3 finals and 2 wins, which in terms of stats is an impressive overall performance that has come to define Laurel as one of the most dominating female players in the history of the challenge. Born in Detroit, Michigan in 1985, Laurel would have her first appearance on reality television during the 19th season of The Challenge in 2010, as part of the new players introduced to the game in Fresh Meat 2. Prior to her fame and successful career on reality television, Laurel was an only child who grew up around animals and developed an interest in taking care of them, an interest which she would pursue further when she would opt to take pre-veterinary courses in Michigan State University alongside a major in Spanish philosophy. During her time in college, she also took part and excelled in sports, specifically volleyball. She would graduate in 2007 and her life would completely change with her first appearance on the challenge something which the tall, slender beauty obviously saw a lot of potential in. Quote, People suggested I do it, so I did. I wasn't nervous to do the challenge that I remember. I was skeptical of the real world because they delve deep into your personal life and I didn't want that at the time. When they called me for the challenge, I said yes after only one or two phone calls. I was like, money, competition, and repeat seasons? Yes. Unquote. As mentioned earlier, Laurel would receive multiple invites to appear on multiple seasons of the challenge. With her debut as a physical powerhouse mixed with her abrasive, infamous personality, how could they not invite her back? At the same time, Laura also delved into a career in modeling, and with her stunning looks, perfectly sculpted face, and towering height, um, yeah, I feel like she was born to be a model. As Laura would slowly embrace her place in the spotlight, she would also thrive in reality television, making a career out of it. But unlike her other castmates, Laura didn't allow her relative fame to be the sole focus of her life or career, as she also continued to pursue her lifetime goal of adding a doctor to her her name. With her successful completion of a four-year degree in veterinary school in 2022, quote, this is weird to say, but I feel important. I don't know how many of you know, but I'm working to complete a doctorate of veterinary medicine. My goal is to help all animals and animal owners. I want to help people care for their creatures. This is my life dream. Nothing in life has ever given me a feeling of importance. Not being on the challenge, not being quote-unquote famous, not relationships, nothing. I truly believe this is how one is supposed to feel in their career." Unquote. 
Laurel would continue to bring her followers on her social media account into her personal life, but it wasn't always to share exciting news. The reality television star would share her thoughts on a devastating experience she went through when she was at college. Age 21 years old, Stucky would be assaulted by a man who took her virginity. Addressing the unnamed man, Laurel wrote, to the person who took my virginity without my consent. God help me get back to the person I was before that happened to me. I want to be her again, that's all I want. It closes you off to love, to people, to trusting anyone. The saddest part is that it makes you call to your family, friends, those who care about you, and they did nothing wrong. She continued with, I know you have two daughters now. I thought about sending you the angry 10-page letter that I wrote, but guess what? I never sent it. I don't want to be a person who causes more harm. Even though you took everything from me that night, you took my feeling of safety. From that point on, my body was always on edge like I was about to be attacked at any moment. It's not okay to start having sex with a girl that got too drunk and went downstairs to go to sleep. You never even apologized to me and I know you know how bad it was because you used to talk about girls behind their backs, in the halls and how they were conquest to you, but you never spoke about me that way because deep down you know that's the worst thing you've ever done. In the letter I wrote you, I said that I hope your daughters never experience what you did to me at the hands of another man or woman. Imagine that pain you would feel to know someone did to them what you did to me. For 10 years, I had to suffer internally before I was strong enough to recognize and admit that I was rotting away on the inside. Only just now, you know, really starting to enjoy this dating is because I, there were periods where I would shudder at somebody trying to, you know, be romantic with me and that, that I needed to heal, you know, a, a significant a significant event in my life in order to be able to even feel comfortable. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, not to get like down or anything, but I, I am really happy that I, uh, that I'm at where I'm at now. And so it's been fun and mm -hmm. it takes a, it takes a long time for me. It took a long time because in those circumstances, you know, they can, the, the after, the after effect of something like that affects everybody differently, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Laurel's full comments on the matter will be linked in the description down below for anyone who is interested in reading it fully. But in conclusion of this segment of the video, I just want to say that this was horrifying to read. Finding out that she went through this and that it was her first intimate experience ever is just so heartbreaking. And Laurel not only surviving it, but being able to address it publicly and bringing awareness to the situation that sadly many women find themselves in is really amazing. And it makes Laurel Stucky even more of a bad badass and I'm happy to see her thriving and healing from it. When I first started thinking about making this video about Laurel, I honestly thought that I would have little nice things to say about her, if any, other than her obvious superior physical performance on the challenge. But while diving into this part of the video, I found myself really enjoying her. From her chosen career that allows her to take care of helpless animals, to her Instagram videos of her showcasing her beautiful singing voice and guitar skills, and finally, to her heroin story story of surviving SA. There's a lot to like here. Dive bar on the east side where you at? Phone lights on my nightstand in the back. Come here, you can meet me in the back. Dark jeans and your Nikes, look at you. Oh damn, never seen. On the Zach Nicholas podcast, Raven, who is a co-star of Laurel on the challenge, revealed an act of kindness that Stucky did that is not often talked about, and that helps in showcasing a side of the reality star that is easily missed with her appearance on the challenge. My dad was diagnosed with cancer and um, I put out a GoFundMe. She donated a large amount and I didn't even speak to her at the time. I didn't like, you know, we had no really connection or friendship. I think that's really important that you, you said that because I think yeah. Laurel's getting some hate right now for mm -hmm. a lot of her actions and people would say she's not a very like kind and giving person no, like you just said she, she had very rarely spoken to you yeah but when you needed someone you know there's gonna be a lot of hate coming her way i think we're gonna make a lot of jokes but i also want laurel's a beautiful person inside and out she and even is. though she struggles with things yeah there's things like that that she does i feel like that maybe the laurel we see on the challenge does not reflect the complete picture of who laurel stucky is her over competitiveness pride and arrogance all 
all come out due to the nature of the show itself. And while some people are able to remain true to themselves throughout all the backstabbing, politics, and deceit, there are a lot of players who let the game get to them. And Laurel Stucky, aka the Queen of Eliminations, is the poster child for taking things too far. Part 2 The Challenge Laurel Stuckey's first appearance on The Challenge would be in 2010 during the filming of Fresh Meats 2, where her tall stature as well as impressive stats would lead to her being picked first by Durrell. However, when the production reshot the scene, Durrell changed his mind and switched to Cara Maria, reasoning that if he needed to carry his partner at any point in the game, he would probably have an easier time carrying Cara. Kenny would then swoop Laurel up by hilariously referring to her as the tall one in the back. And I mean, that's pretty accurate. She's pretty tall and she was standing in the back. And Kenny, I want the tall chick in the back. Laurel. Yeah. Go, baby. This matchup between Kenny and Laurel would prove to be very successful for the pair, as they go on to win the first daily challenge not only making them safe but giving them the power to vote on whichever team they wanted. Laurel's celebratory dance after winning her first daily challenge comes off as a bit over the top, as she pretty much rubs her winning in everyone's face, a pattern of behavior that would continue in the future and would lead to a really epic moment in a few years time. But for right now, at least to pretty much every girl in the house not liking her. Every girl in the entire house hates Laurel. Laurel is kind of cocky. She needs to get over herself. Honestly, I'm just so sick of her. I can't wait to never see her again. Really got the chance to bond with Laurel. I just know that she's very arrogant. But what do I do that's it's different? Just, it's annoying, I guess. It's annoying because I've won no, no, no. most of them. Kenny's uneasy alliance with Wes leads to them both targeting Durrell and Cara Maria, mostly due to them viewing Durrell as a physical threat in the game that is likely to beat them both. This unfortunately leads to Durrell and Cara getting eliminated during the first episode of the show. Fresh Meat 2 is the earliest season I've watched so far, and I have to say Durrell doesn't look any different 14 years ago than he looks today. I guess being unproblematic ages really well. <laughs> with the number one target of the house gone, everyone's still starts turning on each other as two major alliances appear. There is Wes's side of the house made up of himself and his partner Mandy, Caitlin and Brandon, CJ and Sydney, Danny and Sandy, and Luke and Evelyn, versus Kenny's and Laurel's alliance, which has Pete and Jillian, Jeff and Paula, Teresa and Ryan, and Jen and Noor. And as you probably noticed, both sides are dead even in numbers. But when Wes manages to convince Landon and Carly, who are floating in between the two alliances, Alliances. To join his side, he gains the power to take a shot at Kenny and Laurel, and it works, sending them into an elimination on the second episode of the season against Sarah and Vinny. During her first elimination ever, Laurel shows off just how strong she is, as both her and Kenny go on to win the elimination and their place back in the house. And with the lines drawn between Wes and Kenny, we get to see arguably one of the worst political games to be ever played on the challenge, by Wes and his number one Evelyn but more on that later. Laurel and Kenny become the obvious targets to go into elimination, but there's just one problem with that. They keep on winning. They manage to win 5 out of the 9 daily challenges in a totally dominating performance, and they even throw one so that their friends can win. This forces Wes and Evelyn's side to scheme and plot to keep themselves safe. And Wes and Evelyn do this by the shadiest way ever. They literally throw in their friends one after another into eliminations. This obviously does not go well for them as trust is lost within their alliance and their game is completely exposed. Their position in the game becomes extremely clear when the whole house goes against them as Landon and Carly who technically have a deal with both Wes and Evelyn win and turn on Wes and his partner Mandy sending them in for elimination. This is followed by the worst case scenario for them when the whole house votes in Wes's closest allies Evelyn and Luke. Watching the demise of Wes and Evelyn's overly confident alliance is really fun, and the cherry on top of this whole mess comes when Evelyn and Luke win the elimination, due to Wes's body completely giving out on him, causing Mandy, like actually Mandy, to yell at him, it's, it's hilarious. Let's go Wes! Don't you dare stop! I'm not even tired! 
Not even out of breath. And the fun doesn't end there as Evelyn finds herself completely alone in the house and out of luck as she and her partner Luke are voted into another elimination against Landon and Carly. An elimination which Evelyn loses due to her refusal to participate in a puzzle that would shut 5 minutes off of their overall time, making the loss of this elimination completely her fault. Not that she sees it that way. I don't want to hear it. I'll be fine. I'll, I'll stop. Thank you. All right. Stop. All right, cool. I'm crushed. I gave it everything I had tonight, but it comes down to how you and your partner work as a team. And ultimately, the kids just couldn't cut it. Tonight, I know exactly why they didn't win, and it's because of Evelyn. Evelyn did not want to do that puzzle. Luke told her to, and she refused to listen. So the only reason I lost this one is because of Luke. Point blank. Bar none. Nobody can beat me one on one in the challenge. Just treat him that little better, you know? I've never seen a four year old on the show before. She blames Luke completely and is unable to recognize just how horrible she is coming off. Even after TJ, the host of the shows, refers to her as a child. Honestly, bye, Evelyn. Good riddance. Laurel and Kenny continue their winning streak as they completely dominate the final daily challenge, securing their place in the final. And this final was really fun to watch from the comfort of my bed. I love watching these knowing damn well I wouldn't last a minute climbing an actual mountain. But despite an impressive performance by both Kenny and Laurel, the two of them end up coming in second place to Landon and Carly, ending Laurel's first rookie season and final with an impressive $30,000 prize. Laurel's debut season on the challenge is a mixed bag. While she technically had an underdog story, something which often makes me root for the player, especially with all the girls in the house hating her. In Laurel's case, I found myself kind of agreeing with the mob mentality. As Laurel comes off as too confident and sometimes even arrogant, and sure, she has a dominating performance throughout the season, but she doesn't do herself any favors by isolating herself from everyone in the house, while at the same time constantly reminding them just how much better she is. The arrogance and poor attitude would carry on into Laura's next appearance on the challenge, season 20, known as Cutthroat. But here's a few notes I wrote about fresh meat that I have to share with you guys before moving on to the next season. First, I kinda like Kenny, he's kinda cute. And second, oh my god, what is up with Laurel's accent? Like, what, what is it? What accent is this? It's annoying because I am concerned about like what people think of me, but to be honest, I don't think I'm cocky. <laughs> No hate, and I'm not trying to like make fun of her, but honestly, why does she have to overpronounce every single word? Is it just me or is it really rough on the ears? Laurel's second appearance on the challenge would be during season 20 Cutthroat, which was played in three teams with the winning team splitting the final prize money amongst themselves. As I mentioned earlier, this season, which is appropriately called Cutthroat, would debut a more cutthroat version of Laurel's Tucky, where previously her arrogance and cocky attitude kept the other contestants away from her. This season, it's her personal attacks and deep cuts that would or should have alienated the other players from her. Siobhan who finds herself in the same team as Laurel gets into an argument with a drunk Laurel from the very first episode. An argument which was instigated for no reason by Laurel. That's wrestle. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You want to wrestle? No, I don't want to wrestle. Why not? Because you're going to get beat? Then you can run the legs and then you can run away. You're going to get beat. Then you can run away. Your, your boobs are weighing you down. Your hair is weighing you down. <laughs> This incident is followed by a more serious situation where Laurel, who is once again drunk, goes on to verbally attack and belittle Eric, who goes by the name of Big E in front of everyone, eventually reducing this grown man to tears. The way in which Laurel chooses her words while speaking to Eric is deliberate, both recognizing and weaponizing his deepest insecurities to make her attacks of him very personal and in turn cut deeper. She calls him fat, ugly, and undesirable, and she does it in front of everyone. So, no Dude, we came here to hang out. You're ugly and no one will touch you. Okay. Tell me when you poke somebody. Because you can't. I know. It's me, Emily. Emily, Emily, Emily. 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 Emily
I've been the fat redhead in dude in everything that I've done in my life. Why do you think I'm not trying to be the fat redhead dude? You understand what I'm saying? Eric and Siobhan wouldn't be the only victims of Laurel this season, as Mandy finds herself also being attacked by Laurel, who insinuates that her and Chet hooked up in a bathroom as she calls her slurs and humiliates her in front of everyone. For honestly, no reason. Even if Mandy and Chet did hook up, so what? This is the challenge house. Hookups happen. And Laurel would go on to do this exact same thing on multiple seasons to come. She's such a hypocrite. <laughs> and she's already so unlikable and we haven't even gotten to the car Maria part yet. Chet and Mandy go upstairs and close the door. What do you think is going to happen when you send an SLUT up into a room together with a guy? She's going to try and get a little... Not that you left with a guy up the stairs for a while. Laurel is absolutely crazy. She acts like a child and out of nowhere decides to humiliate me. Doing to Mandy right now is pushing her to her breaking point. It's just a fun game for me. But anyways, on a game level, Laurel would be part of the great team alongside Cara Maria, Abraham, Sarah, Siobhan, Luke, JD, Vinny, Dan, and Aya. And the great team would be off to a thrilling start as they win the first daily challenge, guaranteeing their safety from elimination. But during the following episode where Team Grey loses, cracks begin to show within their team, with the girls, mostly Laurel, Sarah, and Aya, feeling like Cara Maria isn't pulling her weight within the team. Cara. I'll be real with you. You, it didn't look like you were trying. I feel that she's the weakest player um, in terms of girls on our team. As she goes in against Mandy and she wins, coming back to the great team and Abraham, who she has a flirty relationship with. I loved watching everyone commenting on Kara's and Abraham's growing relationship in the house. It's honestly so cute just watching them being weirdos together. Kara Maria, weirdo. Abe, weirdo. Maria and Abe are completely freaky. There. That weird little girl's Kara right. Maria. <laughs> But their relationship would divide the great team further as the girls continue to see Cara Maria as the weakest member of their team, which leads to Abe having to constantly defend her. And I feel so torn here because, well, technically this is Cara Maria's first challenge. I know she was on the previous season, but she got sent home on the first episode and she didn't get to experience any of the intense stuff. So yeah, when Big Easy is getting physical with her during a daily mission, sure she would freak out. I still don't think that that should be an excuse to pick on her constantly though. But at the same time, her performance isn't exactly the best. She's the first one to fall off in one of the daily challenges, and she has the worst performance in swimming, with Luke having to physically drag her to the finish line. So yeah, I kinda see both sides here. Abraham's personal relationship to her only serves to complicate this mess of a situation further when the great team loses midway through the season, forcing the great team to nominate a girl for elimination. It comes down to either Laurel or Cara Maria, and Abraham goes on to call Cara a better athlete than Laurel as he lets the fact that he's hooking up with her influence his final decision. And that's not me saying this, he literally says it in a confessional. If your goal is to make money, why would you send somebody in that is a strong player? Look, I'm going off of performance, I told you that, you asked it. She has performed better than you overall at this point in time. Armory is cute and she's way more fun than the other girls. Of course, that plays into my decision, man. A very pissed off Laurel is then sent in against Camilla, who she beats, securing her place back within the same team that picked Clara over her and tried to send her home. So yeah, to say that she was feeling resentment towards Abraham and Clara would be a massive understatement. Laurel and Sarah would both bond over their mutual hate towards Clara, and the two come up with a plan to lose the next daily challenge intentionally as a plot to get rid of her. However, when Abe threatens to send them in for elimination instead, they quickly decide to actually try and the great team wins the two daily challenges before the final. Which means Abraham, Luke, Sarah, Laurel, and Kara are all going into the final as a team, a very dysfunctional team. As Laurel and Sarah continue to doubt Kara Maria's abilities. You are a JB player that I feel is going into a final. And no offense, but people will eat you alive. That's why, because I have to share that money with you, and I don't feel like you just I don't know what it would be like if A wasn't here, Carmaria. That's why I'm pissed off. In any other challenge, you, with other people, 
you wouldn't be here, so. I've learned that the easiest way to make money when there's a team bank account is to split the pot with as few people as possible. And they also don't want to share the prize money with her since she, in their opinion, didn't do anything to help them get there. And in fact, is only here because she's sleeping with Abe. And I'm confused here. Is it that you guys think she isn't strong enough to run the final? Or it's that she is and you guys are gonna win with her in your team but you just don't want to share the money with her? Like pick a struggle please but at the end it doesn't really matter as sarah who has constantly called out cara maria for freaking out and crying goes on to cry before the final even starts she's worried because running isn't her thing and she's totally right it really isn't as she ends up throwing up a bunch of times and has to be disqualified and sent home on a stretcher abraham doesn't do any better as he too has a complete breakdown and has to be disqualified and carried out on a stretcher leaving Cara Maria, Laurel, and Luke to run the remaining portion of the final. And despite a few hiccups where Laurel hilariously cries for her mommy. To feel like a kid who wants to go to bed and hug their mom. The great team manages to come in second place, with Laurel adding another $20,000 to her bank account. Laurel's stuckiest second appearance on the challenge would continue to paint a horrible picture of her. She was unnecessarily mean, rude, and overconfident at every turn, and at times she was even cruel. She took every opportunity to antagonize her castmates and honestly just bully them. From Siobhan to Eric to Mandy and Cara Maria, and that's honestly a long list for just one season, Cutthroat would leave Laurel feeling physically and emotionally drained. But she also couldn't resist taking one last dig at her teammates as she shared her thoughts and feelings on her second season of the challenge on a video she posted on her social media accounts. So I'm sitting um, in the car right now, one of the crew videos. And um, just feeling 100% completely drained. I'm feeling tired, I cried. So it's the end of Cutthroat, for me an unsatisfying ending. Winning's not the only thing, but it's definitely one thing that's important. I don't know, even, even if we were to have won and gotten 44,000 total, I don't know if that would be worth it, like it's not. It's not that much more than I won on fresh meat, and this time it was not as fun as it was before. I don't know if I'm going to do it again. I don't. I uh, I have such a terrible feeling right now. Uh, I'm hurt. I'm banged up, especially from this final. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done. Um, and not only that, I had to do it with two people that aren't aren't like super 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 strong. Um, this might be the end of my challenge. After appearing on season 19 and season 20 of the challenge, Laurel Stuckey would be back in 2011 to film season 21 known as Rivals. And the theme of the season, as the name would suggest, is all about players being teamed up with their worst enemies. And while that is a long list of people in Laurel's case since, you know, everyone hates her, she would ultimately end up being paired up with Cara Maria. And understandably, neither Cara or Laurel are happy about this team up, especially after the epic feud they had going on the last time they appeared on screen together. Laurel's opinion of Kara hasn't changed much, as she still doesn't think she's a good competitor. While Kara is understandably resentful of the treatment she received from Laurel throughout the filming of Cutthroat, their shaky partnership doesn't get them off to the best start, as they get disqualified on the first daily challenge. They however narrowly manage to escape the elimination ground. They get disqualified once again on the the next daily challenge but luckily it's a guy's week which means they are safe but their luck however runs out as they get disqualified for a third time on a goals day resulting into them going in against Teresa and Camilla the pressure and intensity of the elimination looming over them finally gets the two girls to actually talk to each other and work through their problems during this conversation Laurel refers to Cara Maria as her annoying little sister and ah oh, that's just so cute Cara's like my annoying little sister she's just there and like constantly annoying me <laughs> 
at this point i'm not gonna lie at this point of watching the season i was fully rooting for them to win and thankfully they do and this one becomes an important bonding moment that is only strengthened by them quite literally having to do a leap of faith into each other's arms their new and improved dynamic allows them to actually complete and win a daily challenge for once making them safe from elimination meanwhile laurel and ct are flirting and seem to have a thing going on although it doesn't really go anywhere as it turns out flirting with both laurel and mandy is all a part of ct's master plan to secure the girl's vote in an effort to keep himself safe from elimination and while both relationships don't really go anywhere this whole thing would lead to a hilarious moment where mandy calls laurel bigfoot and i'm sorry but i laughed at that way harder than i should have another moment which had me really liking the season came with kenny's impression of cara maria being a loner in the club i'm not really in the mood to party with anybody I want to chill and I want to be alone. I'm only child. That's what I do. Hi, my name's Kenny Maria, and I like horses and Abram and everybody's me. And I hate everyone in this house. I hate everyone. And while the impression and the extensions were to die for, what happens next is definitely not okay. As Cara Maria is literally sitting alone minding her own business, she gets approached by Johnny Bananas and a conversation happens where Cara makes a comment about how it's not okay for Laurel to be connected to CT, who's the guy's target, while Jen is literally sleeping with Adam, who's CT's literal partner in the game. And honestly, she has a point there. But somehow, Jen, with her super hearing, managed just to hear exactly what Kara said five feet away from her and with the music blasting and she takes issues with the sleeping part. A fight breaks out where Jen acts unnecessarily aggressive towards Kara, gets all in her face and corners her while yelling at her in front of everyone and all of this leads to Kara Maria crying in response, which honestly who could blame her. But on the bright side, Laurel's and Kara's relationships gets closer as a result and I just love them together. If that's what you need to do, you need to stand up for yourself, then you do that. I got your back. I got yours. This one-off incident turns into the whole house basically ganging up on Kara and at times flat out bullying her as Jen continues to come for her with the support of Johnny, Mandy, Tyler and honestly pretty much everyone in the challenge house. Kara does stand up for herself but it doesn't really get her anywhere as everyone votes her and Laura for elimination against Jasmine and John A. And as a final dig at her, the whole house unites in wearing blue in support of Jasmine and John A. Jokes on them though as Laurel and Kara easily win, securing their place in the final. Everyone decides to have a massive party before heading into the final and things get really really messy as beds get flipped, people fall left and right and suddenly we cut to Cara Maria and suddenly we cut to Cara Maria and her white dress completely drenched in what we later would find out to be two and a half liters of cola and this immature and honestly cruel act would be done by none other than Wes who apparently just doesn't like her. <laughs> Things get even worse when Paula decides to get involved as she piles on on Cara Maria out of nowhere while at the same time defending Wes's actions. She literally points and laughs at her and she shakes Wes's hand for being, I'm not sure, I guess a complete asshole. Because he is being one, he follows Cara to her room and he keeps bullying her. But Laurel isn't having it. She unleashes her superpower of insults, personal attacks and just plain hurtful words in defense of Cara Maria. And this time, I'm not really mad at it. You're wet and looking stupid. He's the one that dumped me. Something that I know is I'm sticking up for this guy. Yeah, I am. Just no, it's cold. Once loyalty. 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 Once do you have anything else besides no one likes you? I, I do. Do you have anything else besides no one likes you? Yes, Amazon, get the f out, Firecross, uh, get the f out. We're through my reality. Paul, first, shut the f up. First off, first off. Yeah, shut the f up. I'm 39 years old and I'm still on reality TV. I still haven't won anything. Reject of a life. All right, Laura. All right, what else do you have to say? Fake boobs. No you have fake boobs. You're anorexic. You can't get a husband you don't have kids you're ugly cry your heart out you bitch
much. Watching her take down Wes was epic. The Paula part is kinda hard to watch though, I'll be honest. It's obviously not okay to attack someone so personally, literally breaking them down by using their deepest insecurities against them, but it happened and I don't know, what do you guys think about it? Overall, this night has to be one of the ugliest nights I've seen on the challenge. And it ends with both Kara and Paula deeply hurt and in tears. And it doesn't end there for Kara, as Wes continues to badmouth her in front of everyone but this time she puts him in his place finally heading into the final laurel and kara's relationship is great they went from being total enemies just one season ago to actually liking each other and more importantly they've proven that they can work well together as a team and while they do put up a really good performance overall they find themselves running behind paula and evelyn during the early stages of the final and sadly this lead would be maintained by evelyn and paula throughout the whole race, leaving Laurel and Cara Maria with a second place finish and $26,000 prize. Watching Wes once again completely cramp up during a final is worth any amount of money to me, especially after how he was acting this whole season. Get the f*** up! Oh my god, you have no idea. I don't care. Ah, look at my it's not puffing him. It's stretch it. His performance is so bad that Kenny has to literally carry him up the mountain. And I think at this point of writing the script, I have to admit that I have a little crush on Kenny. From his hilarious alter ego, Kenny Maria, to him carrying Wes like some kind of damsel in distress up a mountain. I don't know you guys. From what I've seen from him, he's kind of cool. But back to Laura, who might have not won season 21 of the challenge, but she did score herself a friendship that would last approximately four years. Her and Cara Maria would leave the show as besties and it honestly makes sense that they would be so close. They are both an only child, both women are outdoorsy, athletic and very passionate about animals and specifically horses and they both kick ass on the challenge. Hashtag power couple. And while Laurel would later claim that their friendship wasn't that close and that it was just forced by the production, I personally find that very hard to believe. Especially with Laurel actually moving to Montana to support Cara Maria after she went through a difficult breakup with her then boyfriend Abraham. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't move my whole life up for a person that I'm quote unquote not that close with. Well, you know, I think this is a, a whole, like the whole aspect of television production as well. Like the words best friend never came out of my mouth. That was a thing that they were trying to push as a storyline for a long time. Kara was so absent-minded to the production element of the show that she's like, yeah, my best friend, my best friend, my best friend this. And I'm like, don't you have any other friends? Like I have no. the, like <laughs> best friends that I've had forever. And I just met you. You're not my best friend. Ool had come out to move out to Montana. The darkest times of my life, Laurel's been by my side. And at the same time, with Laurel's great kindness comes also this this meanness. Moreover, their support of each other at that time seemed to go both ways, with Cara Maria explaining later on that she encouraged her best friend to pursue her singing career as well as her lifelong dream of becoming a vet, even going as far as introducing her to one in hopes of motivating her further. Always supportive. I've always been supportive of her. I was the reason. She used to come to me and she'd, she'd be like, I I kind of like singing, I kind of like playing guitar. And I was like, girl, I'm like, you have a beautiful voice. You have to sing. I love hearing you sing. I encouraged her to sing. I encouraged her to go to veterinary school because she came out to Montana and I was like, what do you actually love? What do you like? She's like, I always love animals. I did do, I was like, you'd be an amazing vet. And she's like, that's funny. I took a little bit of that in school, but I never finished it. And I was like, Laurel, I know a vet. Like I know one in Montana. I'm like, let me hook you up. Like I hooked her up for a bartending job. I hooked her up with a veterinarian who did small animals and also horses. You should become a vet because you're the most kindest, beautiful version of you I see is with animals. I was like, and you should absolutely follow that. And I hooked her up, I set her up. She worked at a veterinary clinic that I got her interning with. I always pushed and encouraged her constantly and always supported her. All in all, the story of Laurel's friendship with Kara is a really sweet one that was born from something so ugly and toxic and turned into something that seemingly is so genuine and full of love. This message is for Kara Maria. Kara, I need to share something with you because, um, well, you know why. 
Anyway, this is to make you a little bit happier. And this is because I love you. Ready? <laughs> Cara Maria. Cara Maria. I love you, Cara Maria. And in the process, expose the side to Laura that is so much more likable and easy to relate to. Even at her worst moments, it still managed to soften her overall image in a way which I didn't think could be possible. But sadly, this friendship wouldn't last long, and as it fell apart, so would Laurel's new and improved image, as ugliness, jealousy, and betrayal would soon take place across multiple seasons in the process taking a toll on both Kara and Laurel, until they found themselves in a place even worse than where they started. And it all began in 2014 with Laurel coming back to the challenge having taken three years off to do season 25 free agents with her then best friend Cara Maria. Laurel starts off free agents in a really good way. She seems to be aware of how unlikable she came off during her earlier seasons and she makes a conscious effort to showcase the softer side of her personality while still being intimidating as hell. I mean honestly her looks this season are deadly. Her dominating performance as well as stunning supermodel looks attract the attention of her fellow competitor Jordan Wisely as the two start off a flirty friendship that turns into a full-blown relationship inside and outside of the game. Laurel embraces the fun side of the challenge this season and she seems to be there to experience every adventure the show has to offer. Moreover, she's not as competitive and game focused as before, at least not for the first half of the season. And this, alongside her friendship with Cara Maria, made watching her during the early episodes of the show really fun. Her and Cara have several adorable moments together where they bond, refer to each other as sisters, and are just generally there for each other. Laurel being excited for Cara Maria when she chose the safety card, and cheering her on during an elimination, and then being proud of her for winning are just some of the few moments that warmed my heart so much I honestly can't even explain. Laurel's relationship with Jordan alienates her from the rest of the house, and especially from Johnny Bananas, who's currently feuding with Jordan. Her situation is made worse by the fact that both Anissa and Teresa are working against her as well. All of this results into Laurel being sent in for elimination against Jasmine, who's far smaller than her and is not a match for her in a physical matchup, and ends up losing to her easily. But Laurel does let her score one for good measures, in the process showcasing some good sportsmanship for once. Laurel would go on to win the next daily challenge, however, she loses Jordan who nominates himself to go in against Johnny Bananas in hopes of finally taking him out of the game. However, this backfires with Jordan going home instead, leaving Laurel in a really bad position after he leaves and especially with Johnny Bananas, who resents her for siding with Jordan against him and insinuates that Jordan's relationship to her was not sincere and was in fact all part of Jordan's plan to work with the strongest player in the house. What are you going to do now? Your boyfriend's gone. When did there become some sort of feud between me and you? Because of a relationship that you established in this house, you voted me in. Well, so that was my reasoning. I don't think Jordan's motives are 100% kosher. He goes after the girl that he thinks is going to protect him, is going to be the strongest girl in the house. I don't like your train of thought. Things don't get much better with Laurel losing the next daily challenge and drawing the kill card, resulting into her going in against Anissa, who's known to win eliminations. Laurel, however, reminds everyone just how good she is in this game as she easily wins, sending Anissa home, and well, hate her or hate her, Laurel was made for the challenge. With the final approaching, Laurel's ruthless, competitive side slowly starts to appear. Apprehensive right now because I have two girls who I don't think can hold their own body weight, which I think is pathetic. And she's back to badmouthing the other female players who she deems to be less capable than her. And her relationship to Cara Maria starts to fall apart in an epic way as well. It all starts when she's having a conversation with Cara about the game and she explains that she finds it hard to pick between Cara, Jessica, and Devon. Which um, seriously? I thought Cara was your little sister and whatnot. Why would choosing between your best friend slash sister and two other random girls you just met would be difficult? Cara 
is obviously shocked at hearing this and tries to express her feelings to Laurel, but Laurel isn't having it. She calls her annoying and she tells her to shut up multiple times. Eventually, there's going to be a choice between Kara, Devin, Laurel, and Jessica, and that's a difficult decision. How is that a difficult decision? Dad, shut the f up. You were saying that I'm an option? You? You're annoying me. Stop being so paranoid. I am not going to vote for you. I'm allowed to tell Carmaria if she's being annoying. You're annoying. Don't speak. <laughs> I don't like when people do that. <laughs> This scene was so sad to watch, especially with Kara explaining to Laurel that saying Laurel's name isn't even an option for her, like she's got her back 1000%. Only for Laurel to yell at her and seemingly replace her so quickly with Jessica and Devon, who she's only met like 5 minutes ago. Well, I guess the old Laurel's back, yay. This argument would be the first crack in their relationship and would be followed by multiple similar issues, with Kara being annoyed at how close Laurel has gotten to Jessica. While in return, Laurel is frustrated at Kara's relationship with Laurel's nemesis Teresa, and throughout it all, the two women refuse to talk to each other, instead choosing to ignore one another and letting the hatred and frustration fester into something that will soon be too big to forgive. And that's exactly what happens when Kara Maria finds herself going in against Jessica in a very physical elimination, with the ultimate betrayal coming in the form of Laurel openly cheering Jessica on, which in of itself is bad enough, but when Kara injures her hand during the elimination and has to be taken to the hospital to get checked out, Laurel openly says to the other players that she couldn't care less if her ex-best friend would come back in the game or not, which is so harsh and unnecessary. Kara Marie has been gone. After the challenge, she did not come back and she went straight to the hospital. I don't really care if she stays or not. No, this is not the first time that Laurel has let her arrogance, stubbornness, or her cruelty get in her own way, but it's especially fascinating watching her switch up on Kara so quickly, seemingly for no reason other than she's annoying her. This is someone who Laurel has been so close to for nearly 4 years in real life. Like honestly, watching this made me so confused. The psyche of Laurel Stucky will never cease to amaze me. Anyways, during this whole real-time breakdown of a once close friend, Friendship, Laurel would retcon the whole thing by saying that her and Kara weren't even best friends, which only worsens things when Laurel finally approaches Kara to have a conversation that was just heart wrenching to watch. Like what you did, the way you acted was ugly. It hurt me. At any point, you could have said, I am sorry. I still could say I'm sorry, and you have not. I haven't said I'm sorry because of the things that you did afterwards. After oh, the, the things I did after. Okay. So honestly, Laurel, I'm done with you. Honestly, I'm done. Are you're not a friend. The way you've treated me and the way that you just sat down and talked to me, the first things you should have said was I'm sorry. You did not. Over the years, her and I have become sisters, and so this is probably what it feels like to be sisters. I don't know. Never thought that, like, our friendship would be over. During this conversation, it's clear that all Kara needs is an apology, but that's the one thing that Laurel's stubborn ass refuses to give. I'm 100% convinced that if Laurel had apologized to Kara about the way she has spoken slash treated her friend, this whole thing would get buried and the two would move on, but Laurel refuses to do that. What's even more frustrating is that Laurel in the confessionals is crying about the friendship ending, while at the same time she is unwilling to compromise and apologize apologize for her mistakes. And yes, it's her mistake. This whole thing started with Laurel and is gonna end due to her stubbornness and refusal to compromise and just meet Kara halfway. In the end, Kara Maria's and Laurel's friendship comes to a sad conclusion during this season, with Kara getting nominated for elimination due to everyone in the house, seeing her as an easy target as a result of her hand injury. At the same time, fate intervenes, as Laurel, who's on the losing team, draws the kill card. Card, forcing the two ex-best friends to face off against each other for a spot in the final. Laurel takes on the injured Kara who has a fractured hand and wins. And with Kara Maria leaving, this leaves both women feeling unsure of their future of their friendship. But on happier news, Laurel has officially made the final. And with four daily wins, three eliminations, and a completely ruthless season, Laurel has definitely earned her spot in the final. And she's here to see this whole thing 
going through. Except it's not really the final yet. There is one more elimination and Laurel finds herself going in against her arch nemesis, Teresa, which is very fitting as both women have had a rivalry lasting throughout the whole entire season. Only one woman would come out on top and that woman would be Laurel as she wins the elimination that was notably not a physical one but a series of puzzles proving that she is a threat both physically and mentally. With her fourth elimination win secured, Laurel is ready to win this whole entire thing and she obviously does. No hate against Devin and Nani but they don't stand a chance against her. Laurel finishes in first place in both the first and second stage of the final having been teamed up with Johnny Bananas and Johnny for the start of the race. However, at the third stage she is knocked back to second place after being teamed up with Zack, who hilariously suffers through full body cramps that leave him unable to compete for some time, resulting in Laurel begging slash yelling at him the entire time, and at some point having to literally push his butt up a mountain. And the reason I find this so funny is because Zack has a history of demeaning his female partners for not keeping up with his pace in previous challenges, so watching him unable to keep up with Laurel was really ironic. Do you need my help? Yes. I gotta quit. No! No! What do you mean you want to quit? This is the final. You don't quit in the final. Laurel is able to redeem the time she lost because of Zack in the last stage of the race, in which she has to casually summit a literal volcano, which is so cool. And she manages to finish the final with a 9 minute lead on Nani, securing the first place finish as well as an impressive $125,000 prize. Laurel's appearance on the reunion episode makes her out to be even more unlikable, which I honestly didn't think was possible. Her win of the champion title has seemingly made her more arrogant and unbearable to watch as she continues to antagonize people and specifically Teresa. I mean we've seen her, she Whatever. won her first elimination for the first time. You gonna okay. cry? I can't. Yeah. Girl, what? She's okay, about to cry. Why Teresa? Why you cry, Teresa? Sit down. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, it would only be oh, my You're girl. sweating because you're scared. Her whole attitude this season was horrible, but she does get one nice moment when the show focuses in on her relationship with Kara, where Laurel indirectly apologizes to her by gifting her a sweet gift and the two of them hug it out although their friendship would never be the same. Laurel's fourth appearance on the challenge earned her her first win, but it also set her on the path that would completely destroy both her friendship with Cara Maria as well as her image and likability amongst the fans of the show. Laurel's win would be followed by a long break and I'm honestly happy whenever I see players taking time off of the show to focus on their real lives. Reality television as a whole seems to bring out the worst in people and I feel like that's extra true when it comes to Laurel Stucky. Her personality and overall attitude got worse and worse with every single appearance she had on the challenge and sadly this season wouldn't be any different. Laurel would make her appearance on Invasion of the Champs during episode 5 alongside several and other players, including Cara Maria. Laurel's relationship to Cara has seemingly recovered. They are not what they used to be, but they are still each other's number one in the house. This truce between the two wouldn't last long though, and Nicole here is the one to blame. Nicole starts off the season openly and heavily crushing on Cara Maria, who makes it clear that she is not interested while at the same time enjoying the flirty banter she has going on with Nicole. This wouldn't really be a big deal since both Nicole and Kara are single, except for the fact that Nicole is also heavily and openly flirting with Laurel at the same time. Kara Maria? Hey babe, I love you. Laurel looks like she just killed my ex-girlfriend. But she's a pretty woman, she is. She's tall, she's attractive. Oh, she's a little, probably a little intimidating. Yes, you're hitting on her friend right in front of her, Nicole. So she probably she probably just feels like she's the second choice. choice. Nicole would be all over you, which is fine. You're being flirty and fun and like, you know, it's a joke. You know, it's 
but like that would make me irritated because she's trying to like emotionally right. connect with me. This essentially pits both Kara and Laurel against each other and it gets especially complicated when Laurel catches real feelings towards Nicole. And I have no idea why, since God knows I can't even stand watching Nicole whenever she appears in the episode. I strongly dislike her accent, her behavior, and her as a human being. But nonetheless, Laurel's feelings get hurt by Nicole who enjoys flirting with Kara in front of her. Laurel, you look good. Kara, you look better. Jealous of Kara because, like, we're friends, but Nicole runs to Kara to rub it in my face. I'm being played with. And she takes it out on Amanda, who is upset with Laura for pranking her earlier. This whole thing escalates into a fight that Camilla gets involved in as we get our first appearance of the Camillinator. Shout out to Camilla, who got her own video on the channel. <laughs> Anyways, tension rises when the Chomps team loses, resulting into Kara and Laurel facing off against each other once again. But this time, they go in as friends. The elimination is intense and would last a few rounds, but ends with Laurel ultimately winning, sending Kara Maria home. With Nicole's first choice gone from the house, she focuses all of her attention towards Laurel, and Laurel sadly falls for it. And the two have a relationship that is, in my opinion, extremely one-sided. I feel like Nicole Nicole is so manipulative and basically plays Laurel completely and is so sad because Laurel seems to have actual feelings invested in this. Their time in the house however is cut short when Laurel finds herself going in against Camilla in an elimination, an elimination that she loses, ending her time on season 29 of the challenge. During her appearance on the reunion episode, Laurel would reveal that her and Nicole have been together for 5 months and they are seemingly extremely happy together. She also also sheds light on her relationship with Cara Maria, which is basically non-existent at this point. As the two women are back to hating each other, Cara explains that she expected to get a call once she found out Laurel has also left the game, but Laurel never reached out to her. And to make matters worse, when Cara slipped into Nicole's DMs to get some clarity on the situation, Laurel blocked her phone number from her now girlfriend's phone. Ah, this is so petty. <laughs> two women are still so damn stubborn. Laurel specifically seems to have a lot of jealousy towards Cara Maria and a lot of resentment for her for her part in this whole situation. She goes as far as saying that she doesn't want anything to do with Cara, while Cara saying that she doesn't understand why Laura is so upset with her because she would never ever hook up with Nicole. Except, well, Cara kinda did hook up with Nicole, which as you can imagine made things so much worse. I would never hook up with Nicole. I would never hook up with her either. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. You f said that you had no idea that there was an attraction I between you. I knew I would. Yet you're the show. All this hey, hey, no, I want nothing. I would never be in a relationship. But in order to dive into that, we first have to cover the breakup between Laurel and Nicole. The two's relationship seemed to be doomed from the start. Aside from the shady way in which it began, long distance seemed to be a major factor in their eventual breakup, with Laurel residing in Montana and Nicole in New York City. This mixed with Nicole allegedly cheating on Laurel on multiple occasions, as both women revealed on their appearance on X on the Beach together. I'm nothing. She hurt me. She cheated on me. I hate this show. I hate you, no offense, but I hate every, like, I literally should not have come here. All of these factors effectively ended their relationship after nine months of being together, which sets the stage for the final nail in Laurel's and Kara's friendship, as Kara, who had insisted that she had zero interest in Nicole, would end up making out with her while both of them were filming season 31 Vendettas. And as you can imagine, Laurel did not like that. In her defense, Kara knew how insecure Laurel has been feeling about this exact issue, so I can't help but think that she did it in a way to get back at her or to directly hurt her especially because i 100 percent believe that she did not even like nicole in that way Kara would email laurel an apology but at this point it was too little too late and their relationship at this point would come full circle with them going from being enemies to best friends to enemies again we had our good times and i appreciate those and out of respect to the good times that we did have after immediately when I got off of this season of Vendettas, I sent her an email. I reached out to her even though we hadn't even talked. Coming since Invasion, we hadn't even spoken. I messaged her and I was like, look, out of respect to what we had in the past, like, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, there was no intent to hurt you. Like, 
this was just, you know, a drunken lapse in judgment. I, there's no feelings on either end of me or Nicole. It was a mistake. And I wanted to say, like, I'm sorry. Like, I still care about what we had in the past. And I still appreciate that. And I'm thankful for that. And I hope you're well. If you don't take responsibility for the things that happen in your life, you're never going to change. You're going to end up in the same spot over and over again, blaming everybody else but your own damn Self, emailing me apologizing for making out with my ex-girlfriend on national television when that was a really huge point of contention for an, a long ass time and that's the one thing that you could have not done in respect to me and you did it and now you're apologizing you're saying but nani did this and you know like nani sleeps with people and jenna hooks up with people and like it's not a bit it's like why are you talking about nani and jenna in your apology email to me when you should have just said laurel i'm genuinely sorry this happened please i hope you can forgive me and it might have taken me time but i have the i have the ability to forgive people and so that just made me angry and instead of coming at me and saying you know that's cool like I appreciate the olive branch I still hate you but whatever you know what I mean she came at me and was like you know anytime you talk to me you make me miserable like you know you drive me crazy I fucking hate you like it was just an awful 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 email back after I tried to reach out. Laurel's next two challenge appearances would be extremely brief and very disappointing. In War of the Worlds 2, Laurel would be sent home in the fourth episode in an epic elimination that is surely to go down in challenge history for all the wrong reasons. War of the Worlds 2 showcases an extremely arrogant, paranoid, and unlikable Laurel, who finds herself teamed up with many of her rivals within the American team. Her and Kara are completely done with each other at this point, and have nothing good to say about one another. The format of this season is based on two teams, the Americans and the Brits, going head to head in each episode, except the Americans soon turn on each other and it's all Laurel's fault as she becomes convinced that Wes, Kara, Cam and Ninja are all working together and are aiming to eliminate her and her closest allies in the game, which is why she and Josh outvote Zack and Sandin Wes, their own teammate for elimination, on a challenge that the Americans actually won. Wes is completely blindsided and he loses, but Laurel's revenge doesn't end there, as she and Johnny Bananas throw the next daily challenge in an effort to get rid of Ninja, who Laurel thinks is one of Wes's people. At the deliberation ceremony, Laurel gets called out by Kara for purposely sabotaging her and losing the daily challenge on purpose, while Laurel calls out Kara's secret alliance with Wes, which honestly, I'm not even sure actually exists. Now, not only have we turned on our own but in today's challenge i felt sabotaged by you laurel throwing it in everybody's face that not only are you going to do whatever you want for you i had no reason to put wes's name you did yes i did you came but into this you game let me speak. speak you let me speak, speak for the no, entire yes. team and you can say whatever you want to because i know you know it's true you can say you okay. let me speak did i, did I, I let me my, speak did i raise my voice let to you because you're not letting me speak. Yes, I am. No, you're not. I mean, you just keep getting lower, lower and lower and lower and lower. Here's the shovel. <laughs> Dig your hole. Okay. <laughs> Laurel, in my opinion, is just paranoid, childish, and completely unhinged at this point. But she does get her way with Ninja going in for elimination. But her plan stops working there, as the Brits, who dislike her and see her as a traitor to her own team, end up voting her in against Ninja. And her loss is absolutely epic. As the elimination starts, Laurel is ahead, but both women would struggle to find the last hole for the pack to go in. Laurel, probably in the heat of the moment, ends up stabbing a bag on top of the pole, basically breaking the rules, and one could even say she cheats. TJ would then blow the horn, and Laurel celebrates her win. Her celebration is once again over the top and just nasty to watch. And when she realizes she missed a spot, it's all too fun to watch her lose. It's a game you're supposed to kick my ass in. Don't you dare say that I have bad sportsmanship when you started this. Stop the, the, the trust. No, sorry. That's the way it goes to the challenge. I finished first. I finished first and you all know. No. We play fair. That's what we do. No. And in the words of Cara Maria. Karma. 
I can't lie, watching Lauren go home on a challenge she throws will never get too old for me. She's just too much. The arrogance and overall nasty attitude makes for an extremely difficult watch this season. And while I can't stand Ninja, I was very happy to see her send Laurel home. After an epic and humiliating defeat on War of the Wolves 2, Laurel would be back after a 3 year break to appear on the challenge season 38, known as Ride or Dies, alongside her best friend Jack. Ride or Dies was very disappointing for Laurel as she ends up going home once again before the mid mark of the season. The season is notable for Laurel's brief relationship with Horacio, who she has a crush on early on and honestly who doesn't have a crush on Horacio, he's the total package. But this ends pretty quickly with Horacio opening up to Laurel about a girl he's interested in back home, leaving Laurel feeling confused, sad and led on. The edit of this season makes it appear as if this situation really messes with Laurel's game and honestly I could believe that. As Laurel talks about feeling hurt and unfocused multiple times during her confessionals, Laurel's lackluster performance as well as Michelle's fear of her results into her and Jack being nominated twice for elimination by Michelle and her partner Jay. And while they win the first elimination against the rookie team, they ultimately lose when they get sent in against Jordan and Anissa. And honestly, Michelle and Jay have successfully made lifelong enemies. I mean, if Lux could kill, both of them would be six feet under. Ride or Dies marks Laura's third underwhelming season in a row, where her performance isn't that great, and at this point, I feel like her challenge reputation is at risk. But don't you worry, she would get it all back with her appearance on the spin off show All Stars. Now I usually don't cover the spin-off shows of the challenge in these deep dives, but Laurel's appearance on All Stars, which recently debuted on April 10th, 2024, is definitely worth covering, as it completes her villain arc on the show. Not only is her feud with Cara Maria is at an all-time high, but this season also forces Laurel and Nicole to face the history of their extremely toxic relationship. And before I dig into Laurel's controversial actions for this season, I have to point out how stunning she looks. And I know, I know, I've been gushing about her looks all throughout this video. But I feel like, I don't know, I have to point out how naturally she's grown up on reality television. To me, she looks exactly the same as her first appearance on the show. And it's really refreshing to see her maintain her natural look throughout. And that right there is probably the last nice thing I have to say about Stucky in relation to All Stars 4. As this season, and Laurel manages to make the same exact mistakes I've spent 17 pages already discussing. And as you can imagine, I'm pretty frustrated by now. First, let's talk about Laurel's relationship to Nicole, which is non-existent at the start of the show, as both women haven't really spoken to each other since their breakup, and they both seem to honestly just hate each other. Although Nicole suggests that Laurel is still in love with her, and honestly, her theory seems to be legit, at least to me. Laurel hates my guts because she's secretly so in love with me and I'm not trying to be cocky, conceited or not. As Laurel quickly goes from trying to ignore her, to demanding an apology from her, to play wrestling with her, to surprise they're back together. And if this gives you whiplash, then I don't blame you because this escalates so quickly, especially since Laurel comes into the game angry at Nicole for treating her horribly and cheating on her multiple times. But she's so quick to forgive her, even though as far as I can tell, Nicole doesn't even bother to apologize. Instead, she makes a half-hearted flirty attempt that successfully lands Laurel back in her web of manipulation. This season, Nicole once again manages to come between Kara and Laurel's very fragile friendship. As they start off the season tolerating each other, and they get especially close when Laurel would literally cry in Cara Maria's arms about the way Nicole has been treating her. This naturally results into Cara feeling wary and resentful of Nicole. And of course it would. I mean, if I had known you for years, and at some point actually lived with you, and now find you in a very difficult and toxic relationship, where you're constantly crying and seemingly being manipulated by someone who badmouths you at every turn, and has cheated on you multiple times. I mean, yeah, I would probably hate that person that was hurting you too. Come for my staff, but don't do not come for me personally. Well, you already it. fucking made Laurel cry to me like several times. So I am pissed at what you've been doing to her. I don't want to hear Kara speak to Nicole like that. I feel like that's completely understandable, but it isn't for Laurel, who ends up siding with Nicole when she attacks Kara for expressing her distrust of her. And oh my god, it gets so ugly. Laurel is completely completely brainwashed by Nicole's influence on her, and she's quick to once again throw Cara Maria under the bus. 
does. I feel like she wants it both ways. She wants to be able to complain about Nicole to Kara, while at the same time she wants to control how Kara feels about Nicole. Which like, um, you can't do that. Kara is her own person and in this situation she's completely right in feeling and saying that Nicole is completely playing Laurel for a fool. In the coming episodes, Laurel ends up siding with the rest of the house and targeting Kara Maria. In fact, Laurel comes up with a plan that allows the rest of the house to orchestrate Cara Maria being on the losing side as everyone basically works against her during the daily challenge. And Laurel's plan doesn't end there. She promises Camp that she will come down to replace her in the elimination, making sure that it's Cara versus Laurel. She does this so Laurel can steal Cara Maria's star and send her home and secure her place in the final. Except she chickens out last second, resulting to Cara Maria winning and Camp going home. Well, you're gonna look back on this and regret the way Nicole's playing you for a fool. Stop, keep, you can't even talk. talk. Nicole, you need subtitles. She's crying to me, and then the two of you are making out. You're interpreting it wrong. You interpret everything wrong. Interpret the world wrong. What they made it seem like was that there were fights and they slowly made up and now they're together. That is not at all what it was. It was the most toxic thing I've ever seen, and that's why there's so much hate and beef towards Laurel now. It's because some of it is starting to get shown, but we know what really happened. And they were at each other's throats. Nicole would cry on my shoulder at one in the afternoon. Laurel would cry on Cara's shoulder at one in the afternoon. They would both, we'd be like, all right, cool, we're good now. They'd go into separate rooms. Cara and I would link up. Someone would walk in and be like, yo, they're making out in the closet. And it's like, it's two o'clock. We just, she was crying to me about her an hour ago. It went on like that on a daily basis for the entire season. What's the last time? This, however, leaves Laurel without a star, which is needed for her to be able to run the final. However, with the final daily challenge comes the last opportunity to win a star. And of course, Laurel wins it. I mean, it's Laurel. She's a beast. During the final, Laurel would receive four advantages. One that she wins herself and three that get given to her by her allies in the house who gets eliminated. This, alongside Laurel's typical excellent performance in the final, allows her to walk away with the final prize money of $250,000. By far the biggest prize Laurel has ever won on the challenge. Laurel would excitedly celebrate this achievement while stating that she is going to be debt free, as this allows her to pay off her vet degree which is honestly nice to see. While Laurel's relationship to Nicole would continue after the show aired, it wouldn't last long. Their breakup would unfold in a very messy way across the two social media accounts, with them going back and forth on Instagram in a series of now-deleted comments. As far as I can tell, it all started with Laurel commenting on a picture Nicole posted to Instagram, with the description saying that this is what a healthy relationship looks like. To which Laurel responded with a quote saying, Hope you're not secretly cheating on her too, unquote. Nicole quickly responded with, We're doing great, and no, I'm not, thank you. She doesn't have a tendency to get unhinged or a thief, and she went on to define a thief as a person who steals another person's property, especially by stealth and without using force or violence. Then proceeds to play phone tags, and I was never the type to kiss and tell, but you like comparing notes with an ex-fiance and how old are you?" Unquote. Nicole actually defining the word thief in her response had me rolling. And honestly, Nicole should have kept her mouth shut because what Laurel would go on to expose next confirms how shitty she is as a person. And I'm sorry if any of you guys are fans of hers, but I said what I said. <laughs> Quote, you don't get to call someone unhinged when you are the reason for them reacting. That's called gaslighting. You've done it to me, Ashley and Lauren. That's why we all left you. You are a cheater. Jack's sister is still under your spell. You are a homewrecker, almost ruining Mark's marriage. You are a liar and you have no morals. As FDNY, which is New York City Fire Department, you should be reported for the things you do after drinking. I'm sorry I walked away with your cell phone in my pocket after I found out you were hooking up with Jack's sister at Jack's wedding trip in Italy that I brought you to after you had sat me down and asked me to be exclusive. You haven't changed. You never 
your will and you deserve everything that comes your way as a result." Unquote. And this is a lot to unpack. Not only does Laurel call Nicole out for being a homewrecker, but she also goes after her job as Nicole is employed by the New York City Fire Department. And what she's alluding to here, as she later would explain, is that Nicole might be driving under the influence, which is obviously huge. But anyways, the back and forth continues with Nicole's now obviously angry response. Quote, you didn't walk away with my phone, you stole it. You failed to return it to me after I asked you numerous times. I was left in another country without any means of communication because you stole my phone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Asked by Jack's family to return it, you were outright refused and were kicked out because of it. You are a pathetic liar, not only in the case of my phone, but in the case of my relationship and my career. And the way you speak about me, you need to get a life, grow up, which is ironic coming from Nicole, and live the rest of your days without trying to ruin mine. Maybe one day you will find true happiness. You are the true definition of unhinged. Now please leave me be and move on and stop harassing me and stop trying to call me. This is the reason I have you blocked. Unquote. To which Laurel would come back with, quote, If I was blocked, then I couldn't make these comments. Another lie. Your phone was returned after I got through bearing the brunt of the trauma that you caused me. You have a big problem with lying and driving after drinking. I'm truly concerned for the people you might kill as a result of that. And that's why I brought it up to your family. And that's why you agreed to go to therapy, among other things. AKA your cheating problem. Get help for yourself. At this point, you're the problem. Does this remind you of that meme of the Spider-Mans like pointing at each other like, you're the problem. No, you're the problem. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully this new girl who you're using wakes up soon and leaves you two just like me, Lauren and Ashley all left you. We all came to our senses and we're relieved and now living happier lives because of it. Unquote. And I find it interesting that throughout this whole back and forth, Nicole never actually denied Lauren's accusation of her cheating on her with a man woman on a wedding that she was invited to by Laurel, which if it's true and I'm definitely inclined to believe it is, is nothing short of savage and unforgivable. Jack would later come out with his own statement which all but confirmed the cheating allegations. Quote, it's actually worse than it seems. That woman has no morals, no integrity, and no soul. Unquote. This statement was also backed by Jack's husband on his Instagram story with him posting, quote, you came to our wedding as a guest and you caused irreparable damage amongst family. You are beyond the bottom barrel. We all know the truth, unquote. Laurel would continue to respond to fans questioning her regarding the situation and the process exposing another scandal that Nicole allegedly has been involved in. Quote, no, she is still leading Jack's sister, Ashley, on, though making her think something will happen with them. Like like she did with her best friend, Mark, who was married. She convinced him to leave his wife to have babies with her, but then she went to film and got involved with me so it never panned out. She crosses all boundaries, doesn't care if someone is in a relationship, married, or if she's close with them. I have gotten so many DMs from people whose relationship Nicole has ruined, telling me thank you for speaking up because it makes them feel less crazy. But of course, Nicole gaslights everyone to try to deflect from what she did. Did you see her accuse me of being a thief? She has her phone but not once did she mention that she has not returned my 14 karat gold necklace. That was a gift I received on my birthday that she took from me and used to wear as a symbol that she was with me, all the while secretly cheating on me with anyone she could with. While wearing it, Jack's husband said it best. Uncle. I honestly don't have anything else to add to this whole Nicole mess other than I knew she was horrible from the first confessional I saw her in. I just never imagined that she would be this horrible. And moreover, Laurel should have known better and she has no one to blame but herself. She allowed her relationship with Nicole to come between her friendship with Cara twice. Someone who, unlike Nicole, seemed to genuinely care about her and only wanted the best for her. In a weird way, I feel like Cara was the angel on Laurel's shoulder. While Nicole was definitely the devil, when Cara's friendship with Laurel was good, it was great and Laurel actually came off as very likable and as someone that is capable of actually being nice. While Nicole has always brought out the worst in Laurel, 
Whether it's jealousy, anger, or just by inflicting so much harm on her that I honestly don't think she'll ever be the same. Each time Kara's and Laurel's friendship broke down, Kara has always taken Laurel back and was there for her after free agents, after invasion of the champs, and after War of the Worlds 2. So for Laurel to throw all that history away for someone like Nicole is beyond frustrating, but honestly fits with Laurel's overall image on the challenge thus far. She's always been cutthroat and I have a feeling her 8th appearance on the challenge wouldn't be any different and I'm very excited to see it. Thank you so much for watching this video. In order to make it, I had to watch Ride or Dies for the 5th time. I've watched it for Tori's video, for Amber's, and for both Jordan and Nelson's videos. At this point, I can recite full episode from memory. <laughs> And I can't imagine watching it another time, although I know I will have to, so kindly consider dropping a like on this video. And yes, this is called emotional manipulation and here is hoping you actually fall for it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.